Can you maybe give a little bit of the quick pitch of what team performance training is, who has come to some of these programs, how many of them you've done, and then talk a little bit about Experiment Without Limits, and then we'll just dive right in. Sure. So people ask me, like, who's team performance training before? And I'm looking for someone who's saying, I want to do something truly ambitious with my life. So I want to raise a billion dollars for my fund, or I want to sell my company as a unicorn for a billion dollars. Maybe I want to solve some giant challenge in the world like climate change or you know, racial injustice, or let's say you want to go to the moon, or hey, you want to achieve enlightenment or become a world-class athlete, whatever it is, you're doing something that's really difficult that's going to take a lot of long-term iterative sustained effort to get there. And if you have that type of ambition, especially if you aren't exactly sure on what shape that ambition has yet, this is our way of here is what you need to have in place in order to maximize your odds of success. So a little bit about the creation of, of team performance training, I think would be interesting. This has been an ongoing evolution. So I'll, I'll start with experiment without limits. When I started doing this six years ago, starting working with really smart, ambitious people, I started to just pattern match and recognize, hey, the people who are making a lot of progress to their goals seem to be doing these things. And the people who got, uh, say, off track of their goals tend to be doing these things. How do we create more of the former and prevent more of the latter? And I spent one month, uh, I went to Mexico and essentially did a writer's retreat where I hold up and said, I'm going to spend an entire month writing down all the things that seem to work, distilling those down and recognizing early on, well, I thought I could just tell people they would do these things and then they would just go and do them. And obviously life doesn't work like that. If you tell someone to do something, they'll not. sometimes they'll rebel and do the opposite. Sometimes they'll do it, but only out of this grudging sense of obligation. As soon as that, as soon as you're not looking anymore, as soon as the sense of accountability has left, well, they go back to doing what they were doing before. Anyone who's run a marathon has experienced this firsthand. You don't run 20 miles the week after you've run a marathon because that big incentive is gone. So, okay, how can I get people to take action? So I did another retreat, and this one took me six months of breaking down these recommendations into step-by-step -step recipes or exercises and how someone can implement these into their life. And a lot of people gave me the advice, hey, you should package this as a, an information product and sell it for $100 or $250 or $500. And I just had this moment. It was like, well, you know, how many copies do I think I could sell of this really? It's like maybe 100 copies. Well, what if I just gave it away for free? And that that became sort of our core value at Forcing Function is I think of this as like a Talebian barbell approach that I want to work with like the top performers and find ways to accelerate them, both because this keeps me really sharp and then I have to show value to people who time is very scarce, but also I'll learn a great deal from what the best are doing. And I can then take this still and generalize that. And anyone who I'm not working with, I want to just open source everything I know, freely give it away. So we took this 100 page PDF that I spent almost a year working on and gave it away. Since then, the couple of years since, I've had 10,000 people downloaded across 100 countries, like far outseated my expectations. And I've had the opportunity to impact a lot of people who I've never even had the opportunity to met, which is really exciting. So I said, well, instead of having people just go and do it on their own, how can I take this principle of forcing them to do it? That so much of the value is just creating the space and sitting down and doing it. So the V1 was I was teaching live workshops in New York City. The workshops over the weekend for 12 people, essentially sat people in a room together, gave them a little bit extra context, set a timer and said, okay, now go do it. And I'm just going to stand here in the front of the room and watch you do it and realize that like forcing functions really work, that creating the space, and, hey, actually go and do the thing was super valuable. And meanwhile, I love travel. I love planning group trips. Uh, a couple of times a year, I was getting some of my close friends together for a weekend. And a lot of this, we would get a house on a lake or on the beach and we'd have some fun, you know, we'd swim, we'd go on a boat, we'd play games, 
you know, just do fun hangout type stuff. But I did a little bit of like a Trojan horse bait and switch on them is when they came for the weekend and said, well, you should know that, hey, the benefit of this is this going to be tax deductible for you because you're going to talk about something that's important to you and particularly important to your line of work, your, your business, your investment firm. And everyone had 30 minutes on the hot seat where this is completely your time to present one really tough challenge, which is keeping you up at night and to leverage the shared brain of the group where you have seven other people giving you their full attention on here's what we think you could do, which is it's, the first was like just asking questions. Have you thought about this? Have you tried this? This type of thing. And then giving some advice. And despite all the fun things we were doing on the weekend and that people didn't know they were signing up for a mastermind hot seat, every single time people said, wow, that was incredibly valuable. I'm so glad I did that. I wish I could do that again. The third kind of element of this is 2020 happens. There's a pandemic. Everything moves online. And I get red pilled into online education is the future. Like the future of all education is online. Is it possible to take this experience that I've been creating, this workshop in New York, and import it to an online format where it's not limited to just people who are within this geographical area, but potentially all around the world? And is it possible to create this experience online where you're in a room of people that you really respect? And if you aren't doing any work, they'll know that there's, there's a real sense of accountability there. And I was very fortunate to have a great team around me, particularly my course manager, Tasha, who has an extremely strong background in education. We took that as an education of ourselves. Like, how can we recreate this experience for the online world from first principles, where we have this like forcing you to take action, but you're also in a curated small group where if you don't show up and do the work, people will know, and you respect and trust them so they can give you feedback on what you're doing as well as their experience is relevant to you. That a lot of times you find this, like someone else starts talking, is like, oh, that's not relevant to me. I'm gonna go check my email. No, like people are working on similar challenges to yourself and what they say has import to you. So that was the creation of team performance training. We launched our first cohort in 2020, and we're about to run our fourth cohort this fall, 2022. And it has been just this continual process of iteration, every single module, every week that we give, making all of these small tweaks to try to create an optimized online experience. Little things that we learn that are completely different to the online world, like packet length, that people will not listen to you for more than 15 minutes. So I need to say everything that I need to tell you within 15 minutes, and then you're going to do it that anything longer than that, you're going to start to drift off. You're going to forget things that I said in the beginning. Like I could easily do two hour workshops where I'm talking most of the time, but online it was maximum 15 minutes of having to rework everything. And little things like every single prompt or instruction that we gave needed to be just incredibly precise and specific because if, if there's any ambiguity in what to do, people wouldn't do it. If you're in person, people will explore. It's like, okay, well, I'm here. I might as well just like try it and figure it out. If you're online, people just tune it out and be like, oh, I don't know how to do that. I'm going to do something else. So need to be very, very specific. And then finally, being very intentional about who we paired. So we found that accountability, the lessons are strongest when you have a pair of two people. So being really intentional about pairing someone with someone else who's facing similar challenges and has a similar mindset and priorities in life as that other person so that their life could be reflected back at them. So someone facing a challenge, they could learn from those lessons themselves. The feedback they were giving to the other person would be advice that they would give to themselves. All of these aspects really created a special container. And this is, this is what we continue to work and iterate on is this concept, team performance training.